Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to something brand new on the channel and for me. Today I am flying British Airways World Traveller Plus down to Johannesburg in South Africa. I'm going there for New Year. I'm hoping it's going to be a fantastic trip. You're coming with me and we're going to check out what you get in World Traveller Plus. That's British Airways Premium Economy product. Let's go. I'm back at Heathrow's Terminal 5. It's where many of my journeys start, and as you can imagine, I travel with British Airways a lot. And by a lot, I mean I have a gold frequent flyer card in the Executive Club, and that means I get to cheat. At least for the first part of my journey. I get to use the lovely first class check-in area, which I never have to queue for. I get a special boarding pass, which allows me travel through the first wing, which is basically a cool little private security channel separate to the rest of the airport, and it deposits you in the first class lounge. Before the pandemic, the lounge was mostly self-service, but has now moved to table service, which I actually prefer. You can order using an app, everything is free, and the service is better than Weatherspoons. We are quite lucky to have such a nice lounge at Heathrow with great views and service. They say familiarity breeds contempt and it's easy to get disenchanted with your home airline. After all, this is probably my 100th visit to this lounge, but really it's actually pretty good by all accounts and not just because it's a place I can print my vaccine proof and test documents. I don't know about you, but for me, one of the best things about traveling is not actually being here or being on the plane or doing the trip. It's looking forward to traveling and looking forward to the flight and checking your seat assignments and seeing if you can get an upgrade and God knows what else. Anyways, it's a really strange kind of atmosphere today for me because I'm actually flying out to South Africa for New Year and I've never been away this close to Christmas before. So for the whole month, all I've been thinking about is Christmas and family arrangements and what I'm doing on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, but it's only now on the 28th of December that it's kind of hit home that I am actually traveling today and it's kind of weird. I kind of feel half prepared. I don't know. Um, one of the best things about travel is definitely looking forward to it. Let me know if you agree in the comments below. We're on this 10-year-old 777-300ER for the 11-hour trip to Johannesburg tonight. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas. But Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash wingingit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. All right, we are finally ready to board. About an hour delay here getting on board the plane for various reasons I'll fill you in on a bit later, but for now, we're heading down to the plane. Premium economy, about 11 hours down to Johannesburg. And let's find out if paying the extra money is really worth it on a route like this. 11 hours, Johannesburg, here we come. So the hours delay was caused apparently by first the crew being late and then a seat malfunction which needed to be sorted by the crew and then also by catering not being loaded. So they say, although I suspect, having heard several stories about this before, that the crew were waiting on COVID tests coming back negative before being able to board. Hello, welcome. Hello, 26A. Just down the way, by the way. Thank you. Thanks. 
This 777 features the old Club World business class cabin. Yes, it's an old and not especially good product with a shocking eight seats across, but it is a flat bed and boy does that make a difference on a long overnight flight like this. However, with tickets coming in at over £3,000 return, I decided not to set fire to my money. And so we're in World Traveller Plus today, which has a 242 configuration, same as Club World. The front seats have great legroom, but no window, so beware. I'd picked a seat at the back of the World Traveller Plus cabin. First impressions are okay. The headrest is nice and firm and there's plenty more legroom. There are 38 inches of pitch here compared to 31 in economy. The seat is also wider than economy. There are eight seats across here compared to nine down the back. Refurbished 777s in fact have 10 seats across an economy, which is very cramped. Our journey today is 5,639 miles and will take 10 hours and 50 minutes to fly that distance. BA was a latecomer to Wi-Fi but now has it on all their mainline aircraft. It's pretty reliable, although at just shy of £20 for the flight, it is not cheap. The seat is pretty average for a premium economy product. The space afforded is good, but the screen is not that big and suffers from glare in a way that more modern ones don't. Storage is pretty mediocre and not really any better than economy, and the IFE data boxes will be quite annoying if you have large feet and sit in the aisle seat. However, the screens do tilt nicely if the person in front reclines, and there's a screen coating to ensure your neighbour can't see what you're watching. Each pair of seats has two universal power outlets and a shared console with small drinks table and every seat has a remote for the IFE. As far as amenities go, there's not much, but alongside a blanket, there's a set of headphones. These aren't noise cancelling, by the way. A small amenity kit and also the ever-present charity collection envelope. Actually, the amenity kit is quite nice. I rather like this design and it contains a few essentials like DVT socks, balm, earplugs, a pen and an eye mask. I've never flown BA's premium economy before, so I was curious to see the meal service. I didn't want to rely on the call bell, so I ordered two drinks at once to see me through until bedtime and waited for my food. I have to say, it's not exactly overwhelming. There was no printed menu and only two choices available. Guess what, chicken or beef. And it's not a huge upgrade from economy, although I did get more than two bits of chicken. Premium economy doesn't come with lounge access or any of the bells and whistles of business class. So the food is an easy way to show this is a better product than economy. And I just wasn't that impressed.
These aircraft are showing their age already, despite only being 10 years old. My IFE screen was pretty slow and really unresponsive. You'll definitely be better off using the remote. However, there is a lot of content and you'll be kept entertained just fine until it's time to sleep. It did feel really weird to be over Africa. I was last in Johannesburg in 2002, and I can tell you, New Year there sure beats grey old England. A breakfast arrived and was served by a really surly member of cabin crew whose attitude frankly stank. I have logged hundreds of flights with BA, and to be honest, the staff are the best thing about them. But being served in silence and not even being offered any drinks, I had to ask just to get a coffee with breakfast, is not a good look in any class, let alone premium economy. It put a bit of a dampener on the flight, and you won't believe this, but this breakfast is smaller than the basic economy one I got on the way home from South Africa. I just really don't get BA's catering on this route. So, conclusions. I booked in economy class for this round trip and I paid £620 for the privilege. I upgraded one way to premium economy, which was an extra £129. I don't travel in premium economy often and I've long held the view that unless I'm getting a flat bed, I'm not that interested and if I can't afford or justify business class, I'll fly just basic economy. I'm not especially tall or large and so the slightly bigger seat doesn't hold much value for me and as we can see, the meals and service weren't really much to write home about. So I personally wouldn't buy Premium Economy again, although it is a really popular product and I'd be keen to read your comments if you do use Premium Economy on long haul flights. I don't really have the heart to sting BA in this review either. Overall, I've been really happy flying them for 10 years. I normally get treated very well. And this single disappointing flight, uh, well, maybe I'll just take it as a learning experience that premium economy is not for me. It's either plain old economy or business class from here. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, go to surfshark.deals forward slash winging it for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.